Okay, so we're very happy to have Elizabeth Robbins with us tonight. Um, please stay muted during her demonstration and, but she welcomes questions through the chat. And if you don't know where the chat is, if you hover down at the bottom of the Zoom screen, you'll see the word chat. You have to hover your cursor down there and these links will open up. And um, her friend Shanna is going to field the questions to Elizabeth. You, at the very end of her demonstration, we can open, we can unmute and have open questions. Um, but before we begin, I just want to, Gary, I don't know where you are, but if you wanted to say something, um, I'd like you to introduce you to our president, Gary Forner. Yes, Come hi, on, everyone. How are you doing? I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, for those of you that are not, not familiar with ArtsBridge, we're here in good old New Jersey. And uh, I'd like to welcome you tonight to our Distinguished Artist Series. Uh, under normal circumstances, we'd be having this live at our venue in Stockton, New Jersey at the historic uh, Prowlsville Mill. But uh, there is a blessing in disguise because we're Zooming. We can connect with people all over the country or the world for that matter. So wherever you are, welcome. I'm glad you're here tonight. And uh, I see we've got people from all over the place. So that's great. We're thrilled to have Elizabeth with us tonight. Uh, obviously she's an acclaimed and award-winning still life artist. And, uh, I'm thrilled to be able to have here and coming from Ogden, Utah. Uh, I'll have I'll have Therese give an introduction. Uh, somebody's not on mute, so uh, have our program uh, chairperson proceed with the formal intro. Let me just say thanks for your joining us tonight and extend our best wishes for a happy uh, Thanksgiving and a safe one. It's all yours, Therese. Okay, thank you, Gary. Well, I have, I'm going to introduce Elizabeth and just once again for newcomers, please mute yourself so that we only hear Elizabeth talking tonight. At the end, we can unmute and ask her open questions. But let's, let's introduce um, Elizabeth. We've been very excited in New Jersey to have her and um, both New Jersey and Pennsylvania on both sides of the Delaware River. I don't know, before you go, I don't know if anybody knows, but I lived 24 years in Pennsylvania. Did you really? Where did you live? Well, Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. But. Okay. Yes. That's a drive from where, um, yes. from where we meet, but I know of it. Um, so uh, Elizabeth, uh, has a really beautiful story. Um, she, her love for flowers started when she was very young and um, she lived in Utah and they obviously had a cabin and her grandmother would teach her um, about identifying flowers when they stayed in the cabin. And that's how her love and knowledge for flowers grew. And today she's recognized for um, her still lifes of flowers. And she grows, she paints the flowers that she grows. She must have a beautiful garden with Thank roses you. and sunflowers and lilies and so on. And um, this garden is right outside her studio. She also paints um, portraits, and I like how she mentioned that she likes to capture the soul of a person. And she's extremely recognized for, um, for her art. And she has recently won uh, the National Oil Painters of America 2020 Still Life Award of Excellence. She has a website and all this information and extensive bio is on the ArtsBridge online website. 
And we hope that you will go to that website at some point tonight or tomorrow and um, click on her link, Inspired to Paint, because it offers a supply list and it has a video about her supplies and some of the paints that she's gonna be using tonight. So um, let's get going. <laughs> get painting. Okay. okay. Well, I do have a very large garden. Well, it's not really that large, but I pack a lot in it. I have over, well, probably about a hundred roses and it's always growing, but it is um, towards the end of November. And so nothing is blooming in my garden right now. So I am painting roses that I just got from the florist. And so I, Shanna's gonna swing around the camera so you can kind of see what I'm gonna be painting. Um, I have kind of a shadow box there and I'm using a, a light that's mounted to my ceiling. It's a 5,000 Kelvin bulb, um, which means it's a cool, it's a daylight bulb. And so I'm gonna have cool light and warm shadows. So, you know, it's just a simple little setup since I only have, um, well now, you know, about 45, 50 minutes to, get this painted and I'm, I don't think I'll get it all the way done, but I'll get a really good start and you'll see, a, you'll, you'll get a real good grasp on, on my process. And um, so uh, I have my palette set up here. So, you know, Shanna can just zoom in on this while I paint. Um, I normally don't have my palette up like this. It's usually down here uh, on my tabaret in front of me, but for filming purposes so that you can see what I'm doing the palette better with this horizontal format, we did this. I have a feeling that some of these paints are gonna fall, kind of <laughs> dribble down throughout the, the night as I paint, but that's okay. So, um, and the canvas I'm painting on right now, this is actually a Senso linen that, um, that has been mounted to a gator uh, board. And uh, I've recently been, I bought a roll of this just to try it out and um, I like it, but I normally paint on like a Clausen's 12 linen, um, but that has been given one more extra coat of oil, gambling oils, oil ground. And so to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to go over my colors because if, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about them as I paint, but if you want to see about my colors, I would suggest you go to either my website or preferably even the Inspired to Paint website. Um, because it has a video and all the supply list written there. And there's some free videos as well on the Inspired to Paint website. And that, and I'm going to let Shanna talk about that a little bit later when I um, shut up and I'm quiet and painting. But right now I'm just trying to um, mass in the shape of the vase with this. This is transparent oxide red right now. And uh, I'm going to take Cad, this is cat orange and some alizarin crimson. And I'm gonna thin it down with a little bit of medium or not medium, um, Gamsol to begin with. I use Gamsol for my medium, Ugh, Gamsol for my solvent and Neo McGilp for my medium. So, um, and I have a tendency to talk and I think I say it right, but in my brain I said it right, but it came out completely wrong. So Shannon will have to correct me when I do that. So this is Indian yellow. I like to mass in my, my white flowers with Indian yellow because um, white is a pretty cool color. I'm going to rearrange myself so Shannon might have to rearrange the palette or the camera. How is it coming? Does it look all right? Yeah, I might still have to move it a little bit. Anyway, when I start to paint, um, I love of to- Of course. Have to, somebody needs to mute their, can't their. Please mute. Somebody needs to make mute. Who is it? It's on the left. I think it's the bottom left. Oh, I got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I'm adding a little bit of trans um, French ultramarine to my transparent oxide uh, red to get some of the dark of this amber glass. I, I love painting. I have several amber glasses and I love painting them. 
probably I've done a lot of them in demos lately and probably people are saying I wish you'd do something other than an amber glass but so I'm just a really simple block in cast shadow I'm going to come with this is phthalo green um I have normally I use a uh, Viridian for my green but Shanna Coons introduced me to phthalo green and I'm really kind of loving that so it's just got a lot more strength it too. does it has a lot more strength because I, I paint a lot of jade jars um and uh yeah, you know, the Chinese ginger jars and things like that. And so this jade, this jade color, that phthalo green just kind of gets that to where I want to go a whole lot faster. And so as I'm doing this, I'm not really, you know, trying to paint a perfect leaf. I'm, I'm putting in what I call my um, <coughs> color notes. There's some, I'm going to add a little bit more oxide to that to tone it down just a little bit gray, it, maybe even a little bit of alizarin. So these are just color notes for me. And I'll make this come down a little bit more. Okay, and I'm I am gonna do a a, a fairly dark background. Um, let me see, let me just check my drawing. That's going to be there. This is going to be the pass through light and that goes through a little. Okay. Anybody? Somebody just wanted to know the spelling of phthalo green and they have it right. Okay. Well, and I think this is actually phthalo green blue shade. Let me see, what is it? Phthalo green blue shade is what this is. It's pretty potent. It's like somebody else needs to mute their mic a little bit, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna start to establish some uh, tone of background, but I'm not gonna paint the whole background right off the bat. But I like to use black, ochre, and alizarin, which is basically a, a red, yellow, and a blue, because ivory black leans towards the blue. So yellow ochre being a yellow, alizarin being a red. I can um, make a variety of different colors with that mixture. And I can, if I want it more brown, I can use more alizarin and, and ochre. If I want it more green, I can use more black and ochre. If I want it more um, burgundy, I can use more black and alizarin. So there's just a lot of different colors that I can make with this color. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it, maybe a little bit more ochre to get a little bit lighter on this light, the lighter side of the vessel. Are you using acrylic? No, this is oil. I, um, I started in watercolor many years ago. Um, then I uh, did acrylic. And at the age of about 20, uh, how old was I? 24, I discovered oils. And that was it for me. Okay, and I have, um, I'm gonna take some Q-tips just so you guys can see. How's it looking on the screen? Okay. Um, and I don't normally, I don't do this all the time, but there's a, there is an app called the Notanizer that you can take a photo of your setup or whatever and put it in that Notanizer app and it turns it to Notan, which is, is a Japanese word for like black and white. And, and so you can, it, 
greatly simplifies the light and shadow pattern. And that is what I'm trying to do. I am just trying to, my paintings are all about light and shadow. So I could come in here and say, well, there's gonna be the light, there's gonna be a light there. Um, I can come in here and just, you know, start to establish a light and shadow pattern and give me a sense of where this painting's uh, gonna go. And it's great because I'm not adding paint, I'm just taking away. And so if I make a mistake, it's no, it's no big deal, but it's just fun to do this because there's no, um, there's no fear. We have a review on our website of the Notonizer too. It's free. Did y'all hear that, what Shanna said? There's, we have on our website, the Inspired to Paint, if you go to product reviews, go to, on the main menu, it says Art Essential Library, and then um, click on product reviews and you'll see a product review on the yeah. Notonizer. Okay, so I'm gonna, and I, this is where I like to have two brushes, one for light and one for dark. I'm gonna come in here and darken this in the inside of that rose just a little bit more. Um, even down in here just a little bit. So I'm now I'm getting what I what I consider possibly is like the local color of that rose. So I'm taking cat orange, a little bit of alizarin and some white. And I'm gonna use a little bit of my Neo McGilp. It seems like it's a pinky peach. It's just, so let's see. Okay, that's not too bad. So, you know, I, when I do this, I'm going for like an average of what I think the color is. I don't, I don't force myself to get the color perfect um, at this stage because I paint, when you paint from live flowers, um, florist roses actually will uh, last quite a while. Um, my David Austin's that I grow, I have like a day um, if I, if it's, you know, if I pick them early in the morning and it's cool, um, you know, I might get a couple days out of them, but they don't last quite as long as florist roses. So I don't have that much time. So I have learned to paint fast. Uh, anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to, you know, grab these simple little, sh these simple shapes and Let's see, this one feels a little, little lighter in value and maybe not quite as pinky, a little more yellow in that mix maybe. Any tips for extending the life of flowers? Um, well, one call, always cut them in the cool of the morning. Um, don't cut them in the heat of day. Um, as soon as you cut the stem or, you know, if you go out in the garden and you cut them, um, bring them in, make a fresh cut and put them in water. And I, I like to, even if it's cool, even if it's like 50 degrees, you know, when I go out and, and cut my roses, um, I still like to put them in the fridge for about an hour before I start painting them because that kind of hardens the roses a little bit and makes them last a little bit longer. Um, of course, you can always, um, I said I like to use a light and a dark brush and here I am using the same brush because I'm talking and painting at the same time, which is very difficult. <laughs> All <my> asking. <laughs> you know, I'm using both sides of my brain and I'm going to be exhausted tonight. Okay, the inside seems a little bit warmer to me, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more red in here. Um, but yeah, so I harden them in the fridge. You can, and always using, um, you know, the florist food that they give you to keep them fresh. The, the, the thing that will um, ruin roses or make them go bad faster than anything, one is having the leaves in the water um, and having dirty water. So don't have dirty water in the leaves or in the, what did I say? Dirty water, keep fresh water. Deborah Eater said, I, ha I heard that you should stand them in lukewarm water in a cool spot for about an hour to condition your rose, your flowers. So, well, if they are, if they starting to wilt, if you will take a bucket um, and soak 
totally submerge the roses in lukewarm water and leave them there for an hour or so. They'll soak up that water and they'll perk right back up. But um, I'm all, you know, I just, if I'm, if I can put them in the fridge for about an hour, they seem to stay a little bit longer. Okay, I'm, I'm lightening some of these petals here as I come around. And petals, roses, the most outer petals of the roses will always be the least saturated because they've seen the wind, they've seen the sun, the month, they're the oldest petals. So just like us, as, as we, kind of, you know, get a little bit older, we kind of lose our, we lose our, our shine, our youth. And that's kind of what happens with the petals of the roses as well. What brand of phthalo green are you using? This one is, um, oh, it was Utrecht. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Shanna. Okay. And I do tend to pull out a lot um, of times with my finger. Because I love, I love, love, love to carve back in from the neg um, negative shape. So I don't really worry about this outer parameter. What time are we? Five. Okay. Gosh. I got to hurry. And petals, um, roses should always be painted with soft um, edges. And I'm squinting and I'm, you know, literally I'm just trying to see um, the big shape, a little bit warmer than that, that felt too cold. And I'm, I'm asking myself, there's three questions that are constantly going through my mind as I do this. Um, am I too light or too dark? Which is the number one question. Do I need, you know, is my value good? That was too light. Um, then I ask myself, am I too warm or too cold? And then I ask myself, am I too bright or am I too dull? So those three questions are constantly going through my mind, lighter, darker, warmer, cooler, brighter, duller. So now I'm taking just straight white for my white roses. And normally if you, if you don't use Indian yellow, um, you can't use just straight white, but if you can see, I don't know if it's showing up, but when I mix that into the Indian yellow, that white really warms up and creates really a beautiful warm white to, to begin with. I may cool it here and there, um, but if you start white roses too dark or too cold to begin with, the fact that I'm painting under a north light, I, I know I'm gonna continue to add um, more and more white to lighten it and cool it, that if I start too cool, it won't be as pretty. But now I can see some cooler notes in this particular white rose. So I may pick up a little bit of a alizarin or the green or something that's cooler than the yellow. Nope, that, see that's right off the bat, that felt that's too cold. I picked, accidentally picked up a little bit of um, blue in there, which I, I think is too cold. And I don't, you know, it's mainly on the painting right now, but if you were to see me, I, I take a, um, you know, I look and I do a couple strokes and then I'll look and take a couple strokes. What I don't do is I don't just look and then paint, 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 paint. It's a beautiful edge. Which one? You just soften that beautiful edge. I did. Yeah. See, this is when I need Shanna to tell me, stop, don't mess it up. Yeah. Don't ruin that shape. Very right, nice. Shanna? Very nice. It's great to have a painting friend um, 
Shannon and I have a pretty cool story, the way we met and how we, we became best friends and literally next door neighbors. Then gallery owner. Gallery business partners. Business partner. I call her my art wife <laughs> and, it, and it's just great. So I'm seeing that as a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna come in here and cool that just a little bit. And this. getting too complicated for me. Um, I always say, you know, I am, I'm a representational painter, meaning that I, you know, when you look at my paintings, you can tell they're a vase of flowers, but I'm not, I don't like photorealism. I'm trying to paint a poem and not a novel. And I think there's beauty in, in simplicity that, um, you know, it's, I don't want to be reading an encyclopedia. I want to be reading a poem. And that's kind of how I think of my paintings as poems. So here's this beautiful leaf. I'm going to go back to the flowers again just to let them see. OK. There's this, this big leaf that's coming in front of the vase and I'm not quite sure I, I like that. So I'm, um, besides it's kind of hiding the main highlight on the vase. So I make, make a decision to uh, not show that as that big leaf that's there. So I, you know, and I'm, to me, painting is like um, puzzle pieces. I need a cleaner brush. Um, I work a little bit here and then I work a little bit there. I put a piece, a puzzle piece here so that, um, you know, it's not, I don't just paint one flower and call it done. Trying to did you turn it off? I got too much white right there. Some beautiful pinks. It's on the inside at the at the top. <laughs> We have a freezer making noises. I, I bet they can't even hear that. Okay, so I am going to take a break from, um, and I'm gonna move this leaf so I can see the highlight. Excuse me, just a second. How many rose videos do you have on the um, subscription course, the online course, Liz? Um, well, the very the first one has yellow roses and yellow sunflowers. And then we've got the pink roses. That was just this past November's lesson. 
we have uh, how many? Two or three. And you also have one, a tutorial on a setup too. A setup? Set up, setting up the still life. I do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I don't know what I have. <laughs> it's a good thing I have Shanna. That's all I know. I have Shanna. Yeah, the red roses. Oh, the red roses, right, right, right. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I forget about those. Yeah, but so there's peonies, there's um, sunflowers. Jade jars. There's um, glass, brass. Yeah, glass. Well, do, have I done brass yet? Glass, copper. Um, I think for December, we're, we're going to be filming here soon for December, but I think I'm going to be doing just something simple because everyone's busy in December, but maybe just um, a white poinsettia. There's lots of great concept lessons. Maybe Shanna can talk about that while I just paint. Thank you. <laughs> well, we had been thinking about doing a course for a long time, mostly because when we were both learning, uh, trying to find a teacher that taught the things that we really wanted to learn was a little more difficult than it is now. And we kind of sat down and put our heads together about what kind of things people were looking for to help them get better, the fastest way for a learning curve. We just started taking ideas and we had it for about a year in the making and then COVID hit. And we thought there is uh, all of our, both of us teach a lot um, across the country and all of those workshops canceled, all of our shows canceled. And we thought, you know, now is the time. So we just put our minds to it and brainstormed and came up with as many ideas and videos as we could come up with. and. The rest is history. We've been doing it. This is going on uh, the ninth month. Uh, yeah, November was our eighth month, I believe. Yeah. We have not only the, a video demonstration, very much like what you're seeing now, but we have concept lessons that teach you very core uh, concepts that help you incorporate your own work into the paintings. We have art history, we have product reviews, we have tips and techniques, plus business tips for anybody who would like to take this one step further and maybe make a living at it or turn it into a career. Um, what else do we have, Liz? I'm painting, Shanna, I can't think and talk. Yes, we have guest <laughs> artists. We have evenings on the patio. Did you say the critiques? Uh, and critiques. Not enough people are taking advantage of those critiques because they are really basically one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and you can really get a lot of knowledge over spatial relationships, color relationships, um, temperatures, values, all of that through the critiques. And then we post them because you learn from others as well. And we have this really cool group forum where everybody can become friends and become a community because that is the one thing that we do have. We have been very fortunate to find our art friend and we push each other. And if you could find an art friend, I promise you would never be sorry. You push each other further than you ever could by yourself. Um, we do challenges. We both see things from very different perspective as every artist does. And it really, it helps you become more well-rounded. So that, that is basically what our uh, online course is all about. No contract, you can do it month to month, you can do one month. Right now we have over 20 videos posted. 20 full length, full -length videos, videos, 18 concept lessons. Yes. Um, art history and everything else. You can register for free and see 
wide. Yeah, and also, also we have, I mean, these aren't just filmed with, you know, your iPad and everything. I, we invested quite a bit of money in, in, in and it's very, professional. very professional cameras and sound equipment. So but the whole premise was to help people with the help that we wish we had had when we were both starting. Both of us have way, well over 25 years uh, in painting. And we both thought, what would you like if when you were five years in? So that's kind of how we approached it. Where am I at? Okay. You know, I'm getting, we're, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to probably finish, put a little, few little highlights on the vase, get this foreground in, and then we'll open it up to questions. Marianne you know, wants to know what color flower do you think is the most difficult for most painters? For painters, mm -hmm. white. White. Yeah. I think white is the most difficult for painters, um, for students, because um, people understand that there's a light blue and a dark blue, a light red and a dark red. But when it comes to white, people have this perception that there's only one um, value of, and that's white, but there has to be as um, many value changes and temperature changes in white uh, as anything else in order to have it have form. And so that when you know when you think of white, you just think of that one that one value and that one temperature. It kind of throws people off a little bit, I think. I love painting white roses. Oh, there's so much reflected color in it. Yeah. I just, I love white roses and I love yellow roses. Moises wants to know, is the background warm? In relationship to what? <laughs> um, it's a, I would say it's a warm gray. Shanna, would you? Yeah, it's most definitely cooler than the flowers, flowers. or the vase. Yeah, but. It, it's a warm violet. Effective. It's it's a warm violet. Is there are they getting glare? Oh, the color seems not okay. Too bad. Just go ahead and zoom in no, on on the painting. Right. When when I um when I look at that in my monitor, it looks really really intense, and it is not that intense. So that's weird. Maybe touch the screen so it darkens a little, Shanna. Doesn't that look kind of intense in the monitor? A little bit. I think that's the lighting situation. You think? The lighting's pretty bad. The relationships are the same. They work out together, though. These greens seem a little intense to me. Maybe I wonder if we can um, once let's if you don't mind. I'm going to stop and we're going to see if we can readjust. Bring the camera this more straight on. Okay. And but hold on, I see something I, I got to do real quick. I don't like that. So just gonna, one thing. What? Just one thing. <laughs> one more thing. One more thing. Just get on. It seems so light. Let's let's darken it. That's way, way, way too light. Maybe way, a little, way, way too dark. Way, way, way too dark. How about there? There you go. All right. Let's open it up for for question. Let me zoom in, and you can kind of see. Is there a book or a source that you would recommend for learning to draw roses accurately? The Notonizer app. <laughs> so, because we're not looking about details, we're looking at shapes. So, the thing that you you need to remember, um, and let's back out a little bit more. 
you know, honestly, when I paint, I paint that fast to get to this point and then I'll slow down and, um, you know, and tweak it, but everything is there for me that I think will work. And, and so I always take a photo of the setup. So if I don't get it, I'm going to lose this edge. That edge is a little hard. If I don't get it right or finished in one setting, then I can come back um, later with the photo and finish it from the photo. But I've gotten quite a, quite a good start um, from life. What, let's see. Are there any other questions or should we open it up to race? What are the colors in that mocha brownish gray? Here? Mm -hmm. If you want to, uh, people, if you want to ask a question, you can unmute yourself and, and ask directly. Or you can still use the chat. It's the background, Liz, the, that, that, it's beautiful. It's like a mocha. -y. Well, so it's it's a, it's ivory black, yellow ochre, and alizarin, and I use I use that color a lot. I'm gonna put just some petals down on the floor because it's not a, a robin's painting without some debris, right, Shanna? Yep. <laughs> um. Yeah. So it's ivory black, yellow ochre. Uh. And alizarin crimson. My mind went blank. So it's so there's no transparent oxide red in that. Not in the background. Okay. There's. So I had it written wrong. Thanks. This is this is transparent oxide and a little bit of umber here in the foreground. So. Anybody else have a question? I have a question. I like that the leaf Oops. petals um, add a little history to the painting, as well as composition. The what? Placement. The what? The petals on the on your Here? your yes your remnants. My my, my debris. <laughs> yeah, your debris. Do you varnish your final work? Yes. Um, I. You know, there's Gamvar, or I also like to use um, Grumbacher's pitcher varnish because it's a spray, but you can, um, it's a real light varnish. So I only give it one or two coats. I don't like Damar at all. I like a real light coat a varnish that's easily removable. If for some reason I get a painting back from a gallery and I see something wrong that needs to be fixed, I can remove the varnish. And Gamvar is easily removable. And so is that Grumbacher pitcher varnish. We in some, gloss. We have somebody who would like to see the setup. Again. There's the setup again. Hello? Focus. Go ahead, you can ask Kathy. Hi, um, I noticed that you used only two brushes. So well, it was more than two. It was four. OK, <laughs> I think it was so four. Do you clean your brushes be between putting up, putting on new colors of paint or not? Um, well, that's, know. yeah. So normally I will, I'll have a bunch of um, brushes uh, dirty at the end of the painting session. Cause I, I do like to have, if I'm working on a rose, I like to have a, ro a brush that's dedicated to the dark and a brush that's dedicated to the light. So that if I just, if I see something in the dark that I want to be fixed, I just grab the dark br brush and I'm, and I'm, and I fix that, the same thing with the light, that way I'm not rinsing my brush out in the Gamsol so much. Um, and so, you know, I may have, I may have two rose brushes, I may have a leaf brush, I may have, you know, I'll have a background brush, I may have this, I'll have brushes for roses. So that way that I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, pick up, oh, there's my peach color brush, there's my leaf brush, there's my background brush, that way I don't, rinse out in the gamsol so much. I have another question. 
Okay. Um, how do you choose the, the aura around the highlights? Sometimes you use a minty green, sometimes mm -hmm. you, this time it's a pink. Yeah, this time was a pink. So, uh, you know, a lot of it depends on, and I just, I just messed that up. I don't know how that happened. Um, a lot of it depends on the color of the object that I'm doing the aura on. So the aura is generally, um, so I've got a cool light. It's a 5,000 K that's, that's hitting it. And so the aura generally is a cooler version of, of what this, so this is an orange and cooler than orange is, is red or, or like violet. So I chose to use um, violet on that aura right there. And I could have used the green, Barbara, I could have. Maggie wants to know if you have a favorite brand of brush. Yes, I use my I use Royal um, Royal brushes, and I use the Sable Tech line uh, in the fifty five ten series, and that's all on the Inspired to Paint website. It's the 50, nine fifty five ten is my workhorse. I'll use Hog Bristle Filberts um, when I want something you know thicker and more painterly. Um, and I use the 55, the 955 90s, which are, are long. I don't know if you can see that. So this is the 5510. Can they see that? I wonder if I go like this. I don't know. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to have to. Okay. The 5510 is the shorter hair, but it's still pretty long. And the 5590 is that longer hair. So I use the 5590 to, to come in here and like soften edges where if something's too hard, I can use that, but this is, that's the workhorse of my painting right there, the 5510. That's a bright? They call it a bright, but I don't call it a bright because they they actually have a bright that's shorter than that. So it's, I, but Royal doesn't call wow. it a flat, but I do. <laughs> uh, Gary wants to know, do you ever use water soluble oil? I did years and years and years and years ago. Um, and when they first came out, and I, and to be honest, I don't, I, I didn't enjoy them. Um, I know they probably have perfected the water solubles, but yeah, they've come a long way. They've come a long way, but I don't have, I don't really have a lot of adverse re reactions to the Gamsol or Neil McGilp or anything like that. So that was never an issue for me. I still think it looks really, really saturated in the, in the image. Well, it might not on the screen now. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. If okay. um, for those of us who don't have access to fresh flowers or may not be able to keep them as long, uh, heaven forbid we had to result, uh, or resort to uh, a photograph, taking a photograph. Do you have any uh, tips on how you would compensate to keep the life in them? Uh, yeah. that you see on this uh, immediate setup? So I don't have any problem painting from photographs. I don't have any objection to that. I do, I paint from photograph pretty much all winter long. What I do have a problem with is if you solely rely on photographs and you never paint from life, I think that's a problem. So I really, I, you know, I enjoy painting from my flowers. I grew them, I water them, I go out and talk to them. Tell, I ask my kids and Shanna, I go out there and say, you're so pretty. <laughs> and so they, what? Look oh, the over here, so. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm looking at them. Anyway, um, so I have, this, I have this emotional connection to my flowers. So in the summertime, I'm a painting maniac. And I, you know, within that four or five month time period, I'm painting a, a year's worth of paintings, but I also will set up a bunch of setups that I can photograph. So in the winter time, I can still paint from my flowers and I can remember that day. And I can, um, you know, I can remember what it felt like to cut those flowers and put them in the vase and be so excited about that. Um, I, I mean, I hope, but when you paint from photograph, you also, you know, you have to know a little bit about photography and, and understand your white balance and get your white balance right and the aperture, the f-stop and knowing that sometimes, especially my iPhone, when I take a photo with my iPhone, the, um, the, sh the it always co comes out colder than it really is and it comes out a little bit more saturated than it really is. And the camera, the camera will meter off the light. So maybe your shadows will look darker than they really are than if you're painting from life. So those are just things that you learn. Once you paint from life enough, you can paint from photograph and 
and people won't be able to tell. But if if all you do is paint from photograph, people are going to be able to say, oh, that was from a photograph. Does that make do you sense? Have, uh, yes, thank you. Do you have trouble? I love that. Do you have trouble with this? Oh, I'm sorry. I love that painting behind you. That's, uh, I inherited that. It's About beautiful. In the 80s, her name was Elizabeth Ruggles. Uh, it's gorgeous. My mother won it for 25 cents at a show that I took her to. <laughs> well, that was a find. I get that when mom goes. <laughs> That's beautiful. But Elizabeth, oh, I, I must say too, I have two of your um, original DVDs and I always love watching them. I have the Jade and Roses and- uh, it's Oh, that was, that was filmed many years ago. <laughs> So, oh, so what, let's say you're working from a photograph and you're, I see now the connection that you're making with the subtleties of, of each, uh, each flower. So if, if that doesn't show in the photograph, do you become inventive at that point? Uh, yes. I mean, there's, there's comes a per certain time when I'm, you know, I've painted it, but then there's where I'm looking at this and I'm making decisions on what's here, not necessarily what's over there. So I may invent a leaf, I may push a rose further back than it really is, or I may bring one up, you know, that for lighter than it really looks or, um, you know, soften an edge where it might look a little more uh, hard. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, so I do invent things at the, the, sh the long answer is yes, I invent things. <laughs> Thank you, that's very helpful. Thank you. So I don't know if you know, I have a very strong decorative art background. So I was, um, I've written several books on decorative art as well, but, and, and that was all inventive. So I don't have any problem with that. Sorry, I'm coming up here and tweaking things while we're talking. Tell me about edges. Edges, edges, oh. Well, the way, you know, the way our brain reads things, like if I, if I look at Shanna, I'm looking at Shanna right now and her eyes are in focus, but her hair, her beautiful hair is a little bit out of focus. Her shoulders are more out of focus. Her hands down here are even more out of focus. So that's the way we see, you know, the more things go into, into our peripheral vision, the softer edges become. So you can tell that I'm making these edges a little bit harder. And the more like, you know, this particular rose back here, you know, that's really going back. So I'm really trying to soften that edge because a, a soft edge will recede and a hard edge will come forward. So anything that I want to, you know, to push back, I'm, I'm going to really soften. And our brain is an amazing thing. I always, whenever I teach, I kind of ask people, do you sew? And because I, I did a lot of sewing in my youth, but you know, pattern lines are just dash or dash, 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 dash. It's not a solid line. We do not need a solid line to connect the dots. Our brain is this amazing thing and, and it can connect the dot. And, um, and all we need to do is just kind of give the viewer a chance to go to here, to here, to here, to here, to here, to here, and go through. If, if everything is so hard edged, um, it feels really, really stiff. And especially with flowers, flowers probably more so than anything else need softer edges than bases or anything because they're just, they're just soft. They just scream soft edges. <laughs> Did I answer that correctly? So natural. Yeah. Um, but you definitely want to have lost and found, you know, like I always say, a good area on a vase is to find it is at that hippie part, but maybe right at that neck, I completely lose it. So, you know, it's lost, it's found, maybe it's lost, it's found. Again, it, it gives the viewer a chance to go to the next thing. They're like stepping stones, if you will. Does that make sense? Directs the eye. Right, yeah, directs the eye. My job is to, and I'm, I keep thinking my leaves are a little intense, and it's probably because I use that phthalo green instead of my viridian. Shanna's shaking her head now. Which is kind of funny because you're always saying you you prefer the gray. Yeah, but that's that's very it feels very real. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Ken said, "Great presentation on this book. It's inspiring to watch it. Thank you. You are so welcome. I had fun, but I also hope you know that you know in an hour, I can only get so much done." <laughs> 
but I hope you enjoyed watching that process. Again, I would encourage you to get that Notanizer app um, and simplify your shapes. It is, as soon as you can start thinking on the left side of your brain and paint shapes instead of things, um, instead of painting a tree, you're painting a shape, an organic or um, an abstract shape. Instead of painting a rose, you're painting shapes. Instead of painting a portrait, an eye, a nose, a mouth, you're painting shapes. It's all about seeing things in the abstract. I can remember the time where that, that part of my brain switched over because at that up until then, I'd always been painting things and painting was really difficult. And as soon as my brain flipped and I started painting shapes, painting became a lot more enjoyable and a lot easier, to be honest with you. Connected, oh, and also, yeah, also connected shapes. Like I'm, you know, I'm trying to connect, you know, like that to there, or and maybe there to there, and maybe that to that. So there's, there's this, this. Not everything is an island unto itself. It's there's a rhythm. It's like music. You have to have this beautiful rib, rhythm through your painting. Elizabeth, may I ask a question? Of course. Um, when you're talking about connecting shapes. Are you trying to connect shapes of the same value? Like oh, some... that's a, such a good question. And I love the paintings behind you, too. Oh. <laughs> I didn't do it. Oh, this is a Kathy, Kathy Anderson. Anderson. That's a Kathy that's Anderson. Yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. And then yeah. that one is um, by another one of the Putney painters. His name is, um, he signs everything hag up, but his, his name is Jack Kevorkian. Oh. Uh, I recognize Kathy's. Yeah, they're beautiful. Um, Look at the connected shapes. Yeah. There. So yes, I am. I connect light to light and dark to dark. So, you know, if 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 I were to pick up this little corner, if if the lights were like cellophane or whatever, and if I were to peel up that little white corner and I went like this, most of the light shapes would come off. Oh. Or most of the dark shapes would come off so they you know and within an hour there you know i at that point this is where i would stop and say okay where can i connect do i need you know do i need to connect that a little bit more or, or where where needs to be a connected shape but it is connecting darks to darks and lights to lights, so you have this beautiful rhythm if that okay. makes sense thank you I've, I've often heard people talk about connecting the darks and i've often wondered well should we be connecting the lights or the midtones or whatever? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah so, you know, when you, you, you don't want your painting to be light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. It's, it's kind of like, that's just chaos. But if you look at Kathy Anderson's, there's this beautiful connected shape of that in that upper left-hand side of those yellowy, you know, th that's a connected light shape uh -huh. with all those irises. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you connect your darks, your lights are probably going to be connected as well. Thank you. And, um, the name of our web, well, my my website is elizabethrobbinsart.com. Shanna's is shannacoons.com. But our our teaching course is inspiredtopaint.com. Just inspired to paint. And and our logo. I don't know. Can I see it? We have a really cute logo. I can't get that high. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> we had aprons made. But it's the two of us. It's the silhouette of the two of us. So, thank when, you, girl. When you thank see you, that, girl. <laughs> you always love you, to take, your, take care of yourself. Thank I always you. love to learn from you, Elizabeth. Thank you oh, so much. Thank, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Take care of yourself. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank, thank you very you. much. You thank you. you. Wonderful thank evening. You. Thank, thank you. you. Have thank a you. wonderful Thanksgiving with the new baby. Thank you. <laughs> I won't be able to see her. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're welcome. You're Thank right. you. Take care and have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're so welcome. It was beautiful, Elizabeth. Uh -huh. Thank you. So I kept looking at it in the monitor and going, that's not what the colors look like. <laughs> but that's what
because you were looking at a little window. Thank you, Elizabeth. That was nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, there you are. I was wondering if you were there. <laughs> there. How have you been? Are you talking to me? I am. <laughs> yes, I've been good. And it's really nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. Yeah, thank you for that, Elizabeth. Well, thank you for suggesting me. I appreciate oh. that. Oh, and you know, it was a natural choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I hope that turned out okay. It, turned it was out wonderful. Out. Thank you. And there's, like I said, that, I mean, literally I painted for only about 50 minutes, not even out 45 minutes. So, you know, if we ever do this again, we can give me a little more time. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. My so will you keep going on the painting for yourself later on? You know, my problem is um, I tend to ruin it. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'll, I will um, wait for Shanna to tell me to stop or keep going. <laughs> we're, we're, we're probably I have to take her brushes away from her. Yeah, we're probably gonna. We're, we've got. I have a couch here. We'll probably sit on the couch, have a glass of wine, and and look at it and decide if it needs. There's something about these quick little demos. Those of you that are still on here, that. They, they are honest, they're sweet, authentic. and they're authentic. It's what I could do. It's what, you know, it's my poem that I created in 50 minutes. And I know I'm supposed to be looking at the camera, but I can't, I wanna see you. Um, maybe you could move the camera, well, but that was, but anyway, so it's, yeah, it's, it's me. Oh, oh, did you want them to kind of do her a pan around my studio and see how <laughs> messy it is? I did. Oh, you did? Can you fit in one more uh, question? Yeah. I'm curious, how do you use mediums in your paint? Do you use it straight out of the tube? This is, so my medium is Neo McGilp by Gamblin. So, and my solvent is Gamsol. So Neo McGilp is, is kind of like liquid. It's just a very healthier alternative to liquid. Um, and it dries a little slower than liquid. So that's my medium. Do you use it all the time when you paint? Do you ever use paint just from the tube? Or no. You... Yeah. When I'm when I'm getting to the highlight area, it's straight paint. Mm -hmm. um, what? When you want to change the viscosity. Oh, yeah, I I generally I had a I just try not to use too much medium or gamsol in it because of my paint being on a vertical surface, because normally I have it flat. So when I start, I'll thin the paint with the Gamsol. And then as I paint, I'll add a little bit of medium, but I'm usually using more medium in the shadowy areas because I want my shadows to be thin. And generally in the light areas, it's just straight paint. Does that Neil McGill still have alkyds in it or? It's an alkyd based, yeah. So it dries, here in Utah, we are so dry that um, this painting will be, if, if you know, areas that I use the Neil McGill, it will be pretty much close to dry by tomorrow or in, within two days. But yeah, so it dries a little bit slower than liquid, which I like. I like that open time because I like, I'm an Ola Prima painter and so I want time to manipulate edges. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It dries faster. Oh, Gal Gal their, their Galkid. Yeah, they have a Galkid and a Galkid light. If you go on Gamblin's, um, <laughs> website and look up their mediums they have a whole thing and Shanna did a product review on all of their mediums on our inspired to paint site and that's free that's free yeah so, anything else yes I'm, I'm always interested in um do you have do you, do you have a schedule do you make sure that you paint every morning or do you just paint when you're inspired? Every day. I know Better? you talk about the season. Oh, but. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't paint every day. Um, I'm working every day. I'm doing, you know, if it's, if I'm not painting, um, I may be working on the website or we're filming or I'm editing or I'm answering emails or planning, paintings. planning paintings or I'm working in my garden. 
Um, there isn't, I don't have too much Heather, time. I can't get the audio on my computer. <laughs> I'm on a Zoom and I can't get the audio. <laughs> she, no, she's still on. Um, so I very rarely have time that isn't art. Would you agree? It's all the time yeah. until 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in the summer, I, like I say, see, where is there a place that it said you are using your computer audio and I, that, that's not muted. Yeah, Ruth, you're Check still. It. Yeah, there you go. Um, in the summertime, Shanna will attest to it. I am, I will start, I may start two paintings a day, three, sometimes. sometimes three. I may get five, six paintings, seven paintings painted, started in a in a week. And maybe some of them are about 90% finished and maybe some of them are only 50% finished. But when I got hundreds of roses out there paint or blooming, yeah, you know, I just, you should see my studio. I mean, I get, I have buckets and buckets of flowers. And so I start a painting and get it really good. And then I set something up cause I'm so excited about that. And I start painting that because I, I do have ADD, which I think most artists your do. Your microphone. And um, no, see, I forgot what I was going to say. It work furiously yes. in the summer. Camera up there, but <laughs> microphone has nothing to do with muting because we're talking about speaker. But um, I probably camera's on. Not quite paint as much in the winter time. Oh, the camera is I more. I do more. I. <laughs> I do more portraits. <laughs> I do more portraits in the in the winter time. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, and Shanna, turn around and show them my portraits, just so they know right. I don't just paint flowers. <laughs> no, I don't paint cactus. These people are who's turned off. Okay, they're um, they're one. able to talk to her while she's painting to class. They're turned off right now. See the we can yeah, hear okay. you. <laughs> so there's there's a couple portraits. Now there's a one on chat. What is that? <laughs> I just muted. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, so Shanna's kind of giving you a, a quick tour of my studio. Okay. And it's yeah, that, that part's really messy. Those are all the props. all my props are back there. So about it's been three no actually yeah three years ago, I I built this on my property. It's a, a six hundred square foot studio, twenty by thirty, that I had all soundproofed, um, so Shannon and I could film, and and all the other. Where you oh, the, and Bella here. yeah so Bella Muse Productions so I own Bella Muse Productions and so we film we film all the Bellamy's Productions videos here in this studio as well. So you see more props over there. I just have props everywhere. I'm a, I'm a prop hoarder. <laughs> That's not even your house. Huh? That's not even your house. I don't have any props in my house. Very little. No, you have an amazing art collection. I do have an amazing so. art collection. Anything else? I'm I'm open. I'm an open book. <laughs> well, I know that we've really appreciated. Oh wait, there's one. Do you have a professional yeah. framer? Oh, okay. I do. Yes. Do you? Yeah. The question is, do you have a professional framer? Yes, I do. And the framer I use is um, I kind of hesitate to say because then everybody starts using him. <laughs> so good, though. I know he's so good. Um, Ashby Frames, A S H B Y Ashby Frames, and he's he lives probably about an hour and a half just south of us, um, and they're all custom made. He uses it. The frames are all water gilded with 22, 18, or 16, 12 karat gold. He frames the best. With the um, very best. He's just incredible. Yeah, he frames Jeremy Lipkings, and he frames so many artists, but I normally will send him an image of the painting and then I just, he just does his magic when it comes to framing. And framing is important. I always say a really good frame will bring a painting up and a bad frame will, being a, will bring a great painting down. 
So it is important. It's all about presentation um, and having a great presentation on your painting. I've seen so many great paintings with so many bad frames and it just, your first thought is, uh, you know. So it's important to have a really good frame. Did you go to the show in Great Falls this year or did they even- It was canceled. There? It, well, the Russell, the, well, the Out West show was canceled. The Russell Museum was postponed until September. They had it in September. And um, what is your name? Michelle Lopez. Oh, yeah, we've met, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I um, am in Kalispell. You yeah. went to the Hockaday Museum too, so. Yeah, the Hockaday, yeah. Yeah, so the Russell, they postponed it till September and it was only online. And then, so then the Out West show is supposed to go on again in March, but we have doubts that it's gonna go on. And then the Russell is now, instead of having it in March every year, is now gonna have it in August every year. <laughs> so. And COVID has turned the world. And COVID has turned the world upside down. Yeah. So. I, um, I just thought of one more question when you brought up framing. I'm thinking of the cost of selling artwork. Uh -huh. uh, many galleries will add 40% on for their commission. Do you just add, how do you determine your price? Do you add 40% over the cost that you wish to make for the painting or how do you determine cost? Yeah, so I, I set the retail price. I don't, I don't send the price or tell a, a gallery a price and then they add money. I tell them what the retail price is and then they take their commission off of that. Mm -hmm. And um, it, anywhere between 40 and, and 50%, most galleries are now taking a 50% commission. So if I have a, a, a painting that re, I say retails for $3,000, the one thing I do is I, I budget about 10% for a frame. So if I have a $3,000 painting, I put a $300 frame on it. Um, and then it goes to the gallery knowing I'm only gonna get $1,500 out of that painting. But when you when you think about that, that $1,500, so I paid $300 for the frame, so I'm down to 1,200. I use pretty expensive canvas. So even my linen is gonna be probably close depending on the size. I mean, it could be 50 bucks. So now I'm down to 1150. It probably cost me a hundred dollars to ship the painting. So, you know, I'm down to a thousand dollars out of a $3,000 painting, but I, I've never been in a gallery where they up the price for mine. It's, I set the retail price. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And I think most galleries work that way. I, I don't, Shanna, have you ever heard of a gallery that did that? Um, Just one? Mm -hmm. No, because that you have to anticipate that they're going to take that much of of the cost of the painting. So you know if you're selling a painting for a thousand and they take forty percent, you know you're only going to get six hundred. Right. But then you gotta take off the cost of your frame and the cost of the shipping and the cost of the canvas and the cost of the paint. You gotta add that all on. <laughs> yeah, and taxes that you're gonna have to pay on that income that you made. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a Shannon and I ran a gallery, so I we understand the cost involved in running a gallery. Um, but you know, you you have a long relationship with galleries. You can say, look, you know, just pay me fifty percent. Or and some galleries will come and say, well, they want a ten percent discount or a fifteen percent discount, and that comes off of your end or whatever. But you can say, look, I want you know, I want a guaranteed fifty percent. I don't care if you if you want to. If you want to reduce it, give them a 10% discount, that's fine, but that comes off of your end. You know, once you establish a relationship, um, you know, you can you can negotiate that with galleries. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Or is it wine time? <laughs> <laughs> Or it's past wine time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you guys it is, huh? Yeah. You know? I say so, and there it is. <laughs> well, well, thank you again, Elizabeth. You. You're so welcome. It was my pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you.
Can I just say, those that are on, if you're not already a member of Inspired to Paint, if you um, you join, if you use a code upgrade, it will give you 50% off the first month rent or rent. I always say rent. Um, <laughs> your first month so you can try us out you know 1950 try us out and see what you can cancel and you know you've only you're only out 1950 but shannon and i have a lot to share we have a lot of knowledge a lot of what not to do mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we've, done, we've done it all we've made all the mistakes <laughs> many times many times so elizabeth on this inspired to paint um how much is it monthly so we have we have two plans. We have an all access pass, which is thirty nine dollars, and that gives you access to everything. You know the group critiques, um, the concept lessons, um, art history, everything. Okay. The then we have a basic membership, which is twenty nine dollars a month, and that gives you it. You get all the access to the free content, but then you get the full length videos, and that's it. So you don't get the critiques. You don't get the art history, um, the what? Concept. And you don't get the concept lessons. And what we're finding, what we're hearing from students is that the concept lessons are almost more informative than the full length videos. So what we do is we like, so for November's lesson of mine, my concept lesson was fat over lean, thick versus thin. And so the concept lesson, I think it's almost an hour, I can't remember, but I, I, I go into just that concept and then then the, the full length tutorial is me painting a painting just like this, which is, it's three hours long, but I'm even though you're learning everything, I'm, I'm also talking about that thick versus thin. Um, the previous month it was on, or I can't remember which month it was, it was on edges. So the concept lesson was all about edges and when to lose an edge, when to find an edge. So the painting that we did that month kind of incorporated that concept lesson. So Shanna's this, um, months was how to how to paint trees, pine trees how to paint pine trees and then her full full length video incorporated that concept into a full painting and i think we're the only ones that are doing something like that i, I think so too yeah. but that's really important to, to me so if you join at the 39 hi this is vicky and i know that picture hi vicky <laughs> hey sorry i bother you so often no that's no. you're fine so yeah, I saw your name come through and I thought, I thought you already had an account. <laughs> I, I thought I did too, I, but apparently you were right. It was the learn to grow. Yeah. So on the $39 one, because I was debating which one to sign up for, when you sign in, do you get all of the lessons up to that point or just going forward? Yeah, it's like, it's just like Netflix. So you can join today and I mean, you just see everything. If you, um, if you decide you don't like the, the all access, you can always downgrade to the basic, but if you wanna put your account on hold for a couple months, like you're traveling or whatever, you can do that. And then when you come back, you still see everything. So, you know, it doesn't matter. It's like Netflix only, we never remove anything. Does Netflix remove stuff? If they do. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. So you can, you can review something again. Yes. Oh, yes. It's yeah. Oh, that's for a while. Yeah. So, and then we also on the full length videos, we also offer them as a download. So, like somebody joined, but and they want to cancel their membership, but they loved loved Shanna's um, tree video, or creating haze, creating haze, or her sunset video, or my pink roses video. You could download that and keep it forever. It's so a huge discount. At, for a huge discount, we give you a huge discount. If you're a, an all access pass member, you get 75% off the downloads, but that's, you know, otherwise they're all streaming. So we give you that option. If there's one that you want to keep and watch again, but cancel your membership, you have the option to download that lesson. We've made it about as affordable as we can possibly I'm make it. the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we've made it as it's affordable really worth it. as we can possibly make it it's really worth it if you go to an art video an art video is anywhere between eighty dollars and two hundred and fifty dollars oh and yeah everything yeah. here and you don't have it just for one person you have liz's videos and lessons and you have shanna's as well so you get two for the price of one and I, I agree with the concept lessons. They just, they're wonderful on both ends. Thank well, you. We Barbara. work really hard on those concept we lessons because that is the one, that 
that's one really important thing that's different than the basic package, but it's something that propels your learning curve so much faster. Where were we when we were starting well, out? Well, that's paint? why we did this, so that we offered something that we wanted when we were learning. Yeah, yeah. it's they're kind of hard. It's kind of hard to come by, unless you want to take a workshop and pay six hundred and fifty dollars. But then you're done in three or four days. This you can go back and watch everything again and again and again. Well, and also we give you the the reference image. So, like if the, if I had done this as a lesson, a full length tutorial, you would I would I would have a photograph. You would get the photograph so that you could paint along with me. So, and that's really helpful, I think. That sounds great, really. We are trying to make it even more personal too, where you really feel like you're going to a class and you have a, I can't a personal I keep, teacher. Keep, I keep touching. Well, especially these days, you can't go anywhere. And especially if you're compromised, you really can't go anywhere. So true, just so true. So how often is the lessons? Is it like once a month or once a, every once week? Once a month, we offer all of our new videos but you have access 24 seven. Yeah, uh -huh. so new constant. Yeah. New content everything. is added every single month. Usually the first, sometime during the first week of the month is when around we have seven, usually around the seventh, we add the, all the, all new, the new stuff. Mm -hmm. So in other words, once you've joined, you can see a video that you've done six months ago, eight months ago. Yes. Absolutely. Yes and the art history that goes with it, the concept that goes with it, the art, the product reviews, the it, absolutely critiques. everything. You have access to everything. Yeah, the, the group critiques are, I think, really helpful. But, and we probably, gosh, how many, we have eight months, seven months, we have seven, I don't know, there could be, there could be 70 critiques, critiques. Up there that you can watch. Um, where we're critiquing somebody's painting, but you're learning from that critique, you know. And that that is one thing we want people to take advantage of those critiques. Mm -hmm. And they, there's a handful of people who get that, and they get they send it every single month. They send something for a critique, and then there's some people we never hear from. Yeah. But it's so invaluable. I I wish that I had that for some of my mentors. You'll get flooded with mine soon, soon enough. <laughs> I just started painting again. <laughs> good. That's my good. You want to see him. My arm is finally working. So. Oh, very good. Oh, good. I know you had a hard time with that. So are you crit critiquing any paintings or just the paintings going along with the classes or? Actually, the, our favorite is to critique your painting that you've incorporated, everything that you've learned into your subject matter, something that you've done that's very dear to you, to your heart. That's our favorite way of doing a critique because that's, I think that's where you can use what we have to offer the best. If you're just painting what we're painting, it that's that's pretty spelled out. In fact, we're both, we both yeah, we talk would, we a would lot rather, through the paintings. We but would rather it not be the, our painting. Yeah. So, but it, so if you do something that you've incorporated all those concepts into something that really means a lot to you, that's the best, absolute best way um, to take advantage of the critiques. Especially if you, you can take join a for one month and get enough content for every single day of the month and cancel, and you are still going to be a better painter. Way, way ahead of the game. For $19.50 if you upgrade. That's pretty cheap. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, was there another, did somebody type something else? Oh, Sunita said, as an All Access Pass member, I can say this is the best art course you can take. It's all comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love to hear that. And very nice. I'm sure you helped so many. That is our intention. You know what? It is because this serious conviction that we both have 
the art heals the world. I know that sounds as corny as it can be, but it is so true. If you're doing something that you love to do and you're putting it out there to people who love what you do, there is no better way. There's just no better way to change yeah. the world. There's a, on, on the Inspired to Paint last month or two months ago, I wrote a blog on the energy of art um, and that's free. So if you just go to, I think that's on, is, that's on the personally speaking, huh? So if you go to the, the Art Essential Library and click on personally speaking, it's called the energy of art. And I, I go into how art heals. So yeah, we, so we, yeah, we do, we do love to do these little personal speakings blogs where we kind of share our personal experience, but also the evenings on the patio where we, you just get to hear us talk about art and we just have fun. Passion and how much we love it and what the art life is all about, what the art world is, because it's very different than the business world. And we, we are our, our own tribe. We are a tribe. Artists <laughs> are a tribe. <laughs> and Nobody I'm glad I, way we do. <laughs> I'm glad I found my tribe because it would be a lonely world. Nobody else understands me. I agree with that. Yeah. I have one painting that's nine tenths done, but as far as the sub subject matter, I'm not sure where to go with ending it. There's part of the canvas that's not right. I'm stopping because I'm not sure what to do with it. So this is where I could use some critique as to yeah. what do I do with this? It's a building. Do I add windows? Do I leave it just simple, plain? Or where do I go from it here? Add more people in the scene. It's a street scene. So yeah. and, would, that's what, and that's exactly what, what, what we do in the critiques. We, you know, say, I think, you know, you need to have put something here. Or maybe if you took this out, you know, that's, that's besides, you know, maybe drawing issues or value problems, but, you know, compositional things like that yeah. as well. Well, and another thing that's really important to both of us is that you find your own voice, mm -hmm. not just paint like us, but you find who you are, what you're passionate about, how you do it. Um, I think that's a little different too. We don't, neither one of us just say paint like I paint. Mm -hmm. the, the elements are explained well enough that you can apply that to how you paint. Right. Now, the interesting thing, as much as Shanna and I both teach, I, there's nobody that paints like Shanna. Nobody. She's very unique. And I don't think there's, yeah, there's, there's nobody that paints like me either. I don't know if that, that's probably- Well, good. that's 30 years. That that's, comes from 30 years of doing it. Do you ever go back to old paintings and uh, revisit them and make changes after you did something 20 years ago, 15 years ago? Yeah, all the time. You have no idea. Oh, good. <laughs> Not just me. <laughs> we go back three months ago because we're not happy anymore. No, like, in fact, I'll say, oh, you know, this is a pretty good painting. And then 10 minutes from now, I go, oh, my gosh, that sucks. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> Do you ever find that you've like overworked it where the paint gets bubbly and thick? Is it okay? Is that like a technique? Leave it thick like that? Or is there an issue with how I'm applying the paint? It's whatever you love. As long as it's well, archival. Yes, she says it's bubbly. Uh, <laughs> so that reminds me of that painting right there. You had too much medium? Right, too much medium or you used you 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 didn't do that fat over lean method you had lean applications over fat or even then you can sand it down and paint again i th there's i have a whole there's a whole bunch of paintings here that have been sanded down you sanded that one down uh, yes i did it was Why? horrible <laughs> no this one that was not that was a no, good painting no it was not <laughs> good lord it's hilarious. <laughs> I had my gesso crack. Like I don't know if I put too much gesso on or well, maybe. Yeah. So if you're you're you would be better to do several thin layers than a thicker thicker layer. Because I always sand in between all my layers, but I don't know. I think in that one spot it must have got thicker or something. 
Uh, and that was the gesso on the canvas, not the paint itself. Well, I paint the painting looked fine, and then later it had a crack there. So I don't know. I'm assuming it was the gesso. It could be. So I did a painting, a large one, 24 by 30. And um, oh, I mean, it just ended up, I didn't, I gave it a thin coat of varnish and then I realized I needed to fix something. So I started taking off the varnish and I painted again. And um, anyway, it went through several layers and the paint bubbled and it was a nightmare. It's probably going to end up hanging in Shanna's house because she likes it. <laughs> Do you ever use the retouch varnish? Yes. So what the retouch varnish does is it changes the cellular structure so that it bonds. So whatever you paint on top of it actually bonds to each other. So it's, it's a good thing if you're waiting a month or two months down the road and you go back and fix it, that that retouch varnish makes it so that it's more stable. What kind of retouch varnish? Any, I just use Utrecht, but I use Utrecht, but almost any retouch varnish works. So I don't use a lot of retouch varnish, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll take my Neil McGill with a, maybe a little bit of Gamsol in it and, and I'll go over the whole painting and that does the same thing. It That's what I do. Yeah, it creates a layer where it, it binds. And, and of course, you know, each layer you do, you have, you have to get fatter and fatter, you know, that fat, or at least you can't go leaner, you know? And so, but Neil McGilp has solvent in it. So straight paint is fatter than paint that, than, that's been mixed with medium because the medium has solvent. So, um, and what, isn't there a white that tends to crack? Is it, is it zinc Lead. or flake? Flake white. Flake white tends to crack. But it's hard to find flake white anymore. Yeah. It's hard to find flake white or lead white. I can't hear you. Doesn't zinc, doesn't zinc crack also? I, I think zinc cracks too. No, zinc, zinc disintegrates. Zinc is, That's the problem. Isn't zinc, zinc the is least transparent, crack. but it's... Zinc white is, is the least opaque of the whites, I think. Right, it's transparent. Yeah, I like using zinc when you're doing like mist or something. Yeah, because it's transparent. So which white are you using, Elizabeth? I use I just use titanium white. Oh, okay. That's what I use. And different brands. You know, I um, I use mainly Gamblin's paint. I use Windsor Newton for years, but now I'm a Gamblin girl. <laughs> a lot of people use Gamblin. Yeah. Well, I like their company. They're small. You know, they support their artists and they're all about healthier products for us oil painters and better for the environment. So I like that. But, um, you know, their, their paints are heavily pigmented. And like sometimes even the raw umber and the French ultramarine, I have a hard time even squeezing out of the tube because there there's not a lot of there's not a lot of linseed oil in it, or there's not a lot of fill, there's hardly any filler in it. But I'd rather have a thicker paint that I can thin down than a than a thin paint coming out of the tube that I can't thicken up, you know. What do you do every now and then? I know when I bought something and it and it is frustrating since you've kind of brought that up. You go to squeeze something out and there's all this oil that comes out. Well, that, so that's usually that happens if it's gone. I find that if I travel and I uh, fly with paints and it's in my luggage that that oil separates. So the, if um, somebody told me a trick about that. You turn it, turn the tube upside down. So the tube is down, not up. Yeah. Some people hang it uh, on a on a board with the the little clips clips from the end and with the tube on the bottom. Yeah, I don't I don't find that happens with, <laughs> with the gambling too much. It depends on the pigment. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank Again. you. This is great.
<laughs> Especially these days, you know, you can't go anywhere. So this is quite exciting. I got this email saying I'm going to do this. Uh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we look so I told my husband, I gave him supper. I said, don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my anniversary. Oh. My husband's in bed watching TV. Yeah. This is why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm very lucky. I have a very tolerant husband. Shanna's, Shanna's married, but she probably spends more time with me than she does her husband. <laughs> be okay with that. <laughs> anyway, well, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You guys asked great questions. You've been a great group. I hope I, I hope I didn't mess up too bad with the painting. Um, you know what I might do, um, Therese, is that I might take a photo and I'll send it to you, and you can kind of, if you know. If you have these people's email, they can you can send them off. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. Again, I think the camera, the colors weren't great when I'm looking at it on the monitor. I could be wrong, but okay, we would love that. We would love that, and I'll send you the recording. That's awesome. That we did. All right. Well, everyone, stay safe. Wash your hands. Thanksgiving. Enjoy Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. Thank you Thank so you much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Elizabeth. Bye. bye bye now. Bye bye. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're so welcome. <laughs> You're so welcome.